All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. The truth about the ancient Seventh-day Sabbath has been buried under nearly two millennia of error, tradition and assumption. However, ever since the 1990s, long-forgotten facts have been uncovered, demonstrating beyond a shadow of a doubt that Saturday is actually not the Sabbath of the Bible. The fact that Saturday is not the original Sabbath of Scripture is easily established. It can be demonstrated from Scripture, proven from astronomy and documented from history and archaeology. World's Last Chance invites you upon a journey of discovery. Join us as we delve into the past, uncovering long-forgotten facts. Learn the truth for yourself. Many Christians today reject Sabbath keeping by claiming they don't need to keep the Sabbath day holy because it was meant just for the Jews. They justify this blatant breaking of the divine law by saying, I don't confine my worship to just one day a week, I worship every day. This belief is wrong and based upon the faulty assumption that the law of Yahweh was somehow done away with at the cross and is therefore no longer binding. The idea comes from an incorrect understanding of Colossians chapter 2, which says, And you, being dead in your trespasses, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Yahushua. Multitudes of sincere Christians have been taught that the handwriting of requirements spoken of in this passage which Yahushua has taken out of the way and nailed to the cross is the divine law. This is a skillful twisting of truth with error, but truth entwined with error is still error. The sacrificial law that pointed to Yahushua's death on the cross was indeed nailed to the cross. It is no longer binding. The blood of sacrifices was simply to teach Yah's great plan of redemption. The lambs sacrificed were the type, the symbol, pointing forward to the great antitype, Yahushua. He was the Lamb of Yah that taketh away the sins of the world. When Yahushua triumphed at Calvary, all of the ceremonies pointing forward to the cross were no longer necessary. They had been fulfilled and they were done away with at the cross. However, those who assume the divine law itself is no longer binding lump Sabbath observance in with the sacrificial requirements. They believe that they don't have to keep any of the divine law anymore. This assumption is incorrect because the statutes governing the blood sacrifices pointing to Calvary are in a completely different category than the divine law, which is eternal and of which the seventh day Sabbath is a part. In this way, multitudes of sincere believers are deluded into breaking Yah's holy law. Earl Hen, in his article, Was God's Law Nailed to the Cross?, explains what is meant by the phrase, handwriting of requirements. He states, What was this handwriting of requirements? These words are translated from the Greek phrase, kairographon tuis dogmasin. Kairographon means anything written by hand, but it can more specifically apply to a legal document, bond or note of debt. Dogmasin refers to decrees, laws or guidelines governing a person's conduct or way of life. 
The requirements that are against us cannot be the divine law, because the divine law is for us. Paul himself states, The law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Colossians 2 is the gospel. In this passage, Paul is explaining that the death of Yahushua wiped clean the debt of guilt owed for sin. Sin itself is the handwriting of requirements that was against us, not the divine law that is holy, just, and good. When a person was crucified, a record of his crimes was posted on or near his cross. Pilate inscribed Yahushua's crime as, quote, King of the Jews. As our King and Saviour, Yahushua received the punishment for our sins. Isaiah explained, He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Paul expanded on what Isaiah wrote, explaining, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of Yah in him. All who accept the death of Yahushua for their sins have the record of their individual sins taken away and nailed to the cross. This is what Paul is describing in Colossians 2. And you, being dead in your trespasses, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The divine law, which scripture itself states is holy, just, and good, was never done away with at the cross. What was nailed to the cross, and thus wiped out, was the record of trespasses and sins. When this sinful record is wiped clean, Satan's power over your life is broken. Many Christians today view the law of Yahuwah as a burden. This is fake news, a total lie perpetrated by Satan. Scripture declares just the opposite, pronouncing a blessing on all who keep the divine law. David, under inspiration, wrote, The law of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahuwah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahuwah are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. This attitude toward the divine law is carried over to the Sabbath, which is enshrined in the fourth commandment. Those who insist that the Sabbath was nailed to the cross view the Sabbath as a works-oriented burden, which, after Calvary, believers are now freed from observing. Scripture, on the other hand, calls the Sabbath a delight, the holy of Yahweh, honorable, the divine law calls for all to worship the Creator at the appointed weekly time. The fourth commandment declares, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Eloah. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it. People who believe they do not need to keep the sacred hours of the Sabbath holy because they already worship every day, are missing the point of the fourth commandment, we are supposed to worship every day. Personal one-on-one -on -one time with our Maker is what feeds the soul and sustains us through life's trials. The belief that if you worship every day, you don't need to worship on the Sabbath is coupled with the presumptuous assumption that just because you worship every day, you do not need to lay aside work on the seventh day. But the Sabbath commandment contains the additional requirement to lay aside work during its holy hours. 
Isaiah 58 contains clear instruction on this point. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of Yahweh, honourable, and shalt honour him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. Because the law of Yahweh was not nailed to the cross, this instruction is as important today as when Yahweh spoke it to Isaiah. How many people who say they worship every day actually remember to lay aside their work on the seventh day? Do you? Or do you use it as a day to seek your own pleasure, to do what you want regardless of whether or not it's appropriate for the sacred hours? If the Sabbath command is still binding, and according to Scripture it is, then it is just as important to lay aside work as it is to actively worship during the hours of the Sabbath. One important part of Sabbath keeping of which most people are ignorant is when the Sabbath occurs. It is true that Saturday is the seventh day of the modern solar Gregorian calendar. However, Saturday is not the biblical Sabbath. If it is important to worship on a precise day, then it is equally important to calculate that day by the correct calendar. The lunisolar calendar established by Yahweh at creation, handed down through Moses and used by Yahushua and the early Christians, is the only calendar by which the actual original Sabbath can be calculated. All ancient calendars were originally lunisolar because this was the method of timekeeping established by the Creator at the beginning of time. On a lunisolar calendar, the sun regulates years while the moon regulates months. In fact, the word month was originally moonth and referred to the period of time it took for the moon to cycle through its phases. On a lunisolar calendar, months begin with conjunction. This is the new moon day repeatedly referenced in scripture. The weekly cycle on the solar Gregorian calendar is continuous, but on a lunisolar calendar, the weekly cycle restarts with every new moon. New moons were a time of joy, thanksgiving and worship. The second of every month was the first day of the week. Each week was always seven days long, thus the weekly Sabbath always fell on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd and the 29th of every lunation. This is the function of the moon. In Genesis 1, on the fourth day of creation, Eloah said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. The word seasons comes from the Hebrew word moed. The key word study Bible's lexical aids to the New Testament defines the word moed as Congregation, festive gathering, appointment. Since the Jewish festivals occurred at regular intervals, this word becomes closely identified with them. Moed is used in a broad sense for all religious assemblies. It was closely associated with a tabernacle. Yah met Israel there at specific times for the purpose of revealing his will. It is a common term for the worshipping assembly of Yah's people. This is the word used in Genesis 1 verse 14 when Yahweh was stating the purpose of the moon. On the papal solar calendar, there is no link to the moon at all, let alone to the Sabbath. The cross did not abrogate or nullify the law. Instead, it proved that the law is perpetually binding. If the law could be changed or set aside, Yahushua would not have needed to die to save guilty man. We should worship every day. It is a privilege to call upon the name of Yahweh and spend time with him in prayer every single day. However, this does not preclude the command to set aside our work, to stop seeking our own pleasure and speaking our own words, and spend the holy hours in active worship of our Maker on the seventh day of every week. The law was not done away with at the cross, and the Sabbath certainly was not nailed to it. Scripture reveals that throughout all eternity, the redeemed will worship the Father on the Sabbath. This same passage reveals the method of timekeeping that will be used to calculate the Sabbath, the lunisolar calendar of creation.
Isaiah declares, And it shall come to pass, that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahweh. The knowledge of the binding nature of the law of Yah, the perpetuity of the fourth commandment, and the information on how to calculate the Sabbath is a precious gift. This truth, accepted with gratitude and obedience, will help to prepare hearts for heaven, as the time set aside to worship Yah will be blessed by him to transform the humble believer into his own image. Study this very important topic for yourself. There are a number of videos and articles on our website about the law of Yah, the Sabbath, and the Second Coming. Visit worldslastchance.com to learn more about these and other vital issues. Truth is advancing. You must advance with it, or you will be left behind. Look for more in our Fake News series.